Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not a knitting tutorial, but it means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own project. If you're like me and really enjoy having something on while you work, sometimes you find that the content you like is very visually engaging and you're several hours in and haven't gotten nearly as far along in your project as you would have liked to. So that's where I come in. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Today we are going to, as the title suggests, working on the basic rib knit sock. It's a simple sock. It's a three knit one pearl sock and it is ankle length and it's for my brother's fiance. If you are new here, there were some other videos earlier where I had worked on this and also mentioned that the point of me working on this was because I was waiting for a awesome puzzle to come in for my family for their birthday. Their, their birthdays were in May on the 1st and on the 18th. And I wanted this puzzle for them so badly but I think because of the quarantine and because it had been like viralized on Facebook and maybe some other social media, I know it. I saw it on Facebook because a friend shared an article that was talking about how cool this puzzle was and it's clear so it makes it really hard because there's no design on it, it's just pieces cut all the way out. And I was like, wow, okay, they're going to love that. And it was back ordered and said it wouldn't be ready until July. So I was like, well, I guess I got to work on something else while I wait just to kind of supplement the gift. And it turns out that they were able to ship it out sooner than that. And I got it. So now I don't have to worry about making sure these are done. And this is the first of two socks. So I am just knitting the foot until I can start shaping the toe. And then I have all of my little stitch markers around to indicate where the round starts or ends depending on what you want and where the pattern is located so I know when to start changing up how I'm stitching and the round. So I'm so funny because if you watch the video that I just posted before this uh, yesterday I guess speaking in the future talking about a past video that will be uploaded later it's craziness, right? Um, I said that I went to my work and met up with a coworker of mine and we had lunch in the open green area, nice and well over six feet apart, but it's not really busy there so it was easy enough for us to have a conversation without feeling like we were yelling at each other. Um, and it was really nice. So she, she was off, or she will be off tomorrow on Monday when I go back to work and it was her birthday today Sunday and she's like oh it was so nice to see you we should do it again and I'm like yes I agree you know we're, we're gonna be like this for quite a while we both agreed that even if even if um, everything is open open we really don't want to risk spending too much time out in public out and about just because we don't want to risk catching anything or passing anything on to anyone else that we would know wouldn't be okay so but yeah it was a good day and I brought my knitting with me because she knits and I said, hey, bring your knitting with you and we can just chat and knit. And she was already on her way over because she had to run an errand or something first. So she's like, I already left. I can't go back and get my knitting. So I was like, oh, okay. I brought mine anyway just in case, but 
we ended up just chatting the whole time and I didn't even bring my knitting out. But she did like my bag. And if you watch my birthday, my birthday haul video um, from last year, you'll know um, where that bag came from. So I was happy. Um, and then I got home and I kept knitting or started to knit <laughs> since I didn't when I was with her. And then I took a really long nap and then I had to uh, fix up my computer because it was on the fritz and what else did I do? I think that was it. But oh yeah, I, I decorated another cat, one of um, one of these guys. If you watch my tiny cats video that I make a couple of these knitted dudes here with the Mochi Mochi Land kit and I've made a lot for coworkers and now I am just adding all the finishing touches to them before I can send them off. So that was what I was doing yesterday, late into the night. But today, Sunday, I did some housework. I had to organize my closet a little bit and now that winter is officially over, um, I went through a lot of clothing and just got some more stuff ready to be donated once the uh, places near me accept donations again. So lots of shoes too. I think, oh I got rid of a lot. Some of them were just so worn out and I didn't even realize how badly my shoes were uh, just worn out on the soles. Got rid of some of those. Organized. Now that I, I don't know why it took me so long. I'm like, I, I'm not going to work, like going into the office for a long time. So why do I have all my work shoes out? So I put those in the closet and brought out like my sandals and what I call like my kick around shoes, which are just like my sneakers or trainers if you are more familiar with that term, just your regular shoes. Oh, wait, what? Well, yes, I'm just knitting around. Knitting, knitting. So yeah, I moved, I moved like winter boots to the back, my rain boots, my uh, little booties, my loafers, my flats, and my other fancy type shoes all got moved to the back of the closet and then my sandals and like slip-on sneakers and other things like that got moved to the front. And it's funny because I have some shoe containers that are like out in the open air kind of like part of the bedroom just because the way my closet's designed, um, my cats like to go in there because the door, like the door is like this bamboo slat kind of draw curtain thing, so it's not even really a door, so it doesn't close. And then the cats like to paw at it to try to get in, and because we rent, if they paw, and it gets weakened, it's going to snap at the bottom. So instead of closing it, or I know they're going to paw it to get it open, we just leave it open. But because we leave it open, then they want to crawl in there and uh, get on top of the shoe boxes and sleep. And then because they are long-tailed and fuzzy, their tails rubbing on the very low clothes so then the bottoms of the clothes have fur on them and it's just a whole thing so I had to like do it so that they're not as tempted to just hang out in the closet and likewise they like to hang out under the bed but then um, 
if they don't come out when we need them to and we close the door then they get stuck in the bedroom and then they start screaming and then we're like well why are you in here why are you under the bed or they're running around under the bed and knocking into stuff and you just hear them like jingling and jangling because their collar is hitting um against the wood floor because they're like army crawling around under there so we put some more shoe boxes and under the bed storage in ways to kind of block them from going under there but Kabu every night that Kabu is allowed in the bedroom she is determined to find a way under the bed we have empty shoe boxes with bricks in them just to fill in the gaps so she doesn't squeeze her way under she is she's a sneaky one and so it's funny because I made the bed and I changed the sheets and there's a couple shoe boxes on each side of the bed and they're really there I mean they have shoes in them but they're really there just to block this gap between the bed frame and the the headboard where there's enough of a gap where she can crawl under and hang out under the bed and it was like two nights ago I heard this like scuttly noise and I'm like okay so she woke me up and if you know I am like a grizzly bear and if I get woken up in the middle of the night I'm not happy <laughs> so it's almost time for me to wake up I can see the sun coming up and I hear this like K -k 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 -k. I'm like who is that so I look over the partner's asleep and Koji is nowhere to be found and then I hear it again and I'm like where it's coming from in here somewhere but where is it and finally like I get up to figure out what's happening and then Kabu just like pops out from the side of the bed and I realized that when I made the bed I forgot to push the shoe boxes flush up against the headboard so that the gap between the frame and the headboard wasn't there anymore and I was like ah, Kabu. like I was just singing you praise about how awesome you are and here you are being naughty and waking me up and then she she tried again like I pushed it close and then she ran away because I was like what are you doing and I startled her and then she came back and I'm like no Kabu you need to back up because you can't go under the bed so that was that was fun so that brings me to my question to you guys let me know if you are a pet owner and there's something sneaky and naughty that you know your animal knows they're not supposed to do but they do it anyway or they try to like run away really fast when they realize you've caught them in the act is there something they're not supposed to do and you're like hey hey I caught you knock it off like they know they know and then they just try to cover it up really fast <laughs> Kabu is so bad she's so bad like that I, I didn't I didn't tell about all of the naughty things she does in her birthday video just because I was like oh of course I thought about it more and more after the video I'm like there's so much more that I left out but maybe that'll be for next year when she turns eight and I'll add more because I'm sure she'll find something else silly to do that I'll add to the list of weird things that she does but yes to her determination to get under the bed she loves that she's just my little mischievous one but yeah mm -hmm. so yes that was pretty much um today was just going through winter clothes looking at shoes that I hadn't worn and it's like okay I haven't worn this in XYZ years or seasons so I think it's time for me to donate this or wow this is really worn out I should uh, toss so there there were a few a little bit of half and half 
especially because like a lot of the shoes well not a lot but a f quite a few of the shoes that I had were flats that I wear without socks and so the insides are all gross and stuff so those were the ones that were like nobody wants to put their foot in my nasty gym shoe smelling like Tom's flat or whatever so those were the ones and those were the ones I had for years so they were definitely past their prime but I had some shoes like I was so sad because I bought way back when I was supposed to go to a wedding and I bought the whole outfit only for this wedding because I really it was funny because it was the same same family different person in the family getting married so I was like I can't wear the same dress that I wore last time so let me find one cheap so, because I don't really, I mean, I have some dresses, but more casual dresses, so I don't have any, like, fancy, fancy. I have, like, one, well, two fancier dresses uh, for, like, special occasion stuff. So, um, I bought one, and it was super cheap, because I was like, I'm not spending a lot on this thing I'm not going to wear. And then I was like, well, I don't have any shoes to go with it. So I bought some shoes, also very cheap. And lo and behold, uh, my partner was having some health stuff, so they weren't well enough to travel. And this was last year? Year before last? No, no, no. Something like that. It's, it's a blur now. Everything's a blur. But we, we didn't go. So I had this dress, and when I bought it, it was actually not going to fit me because... It was way, way, way too large in the bust for me, and everywhere else it fit, but the chest part, I would have to, like, safety pin it or something, because it was just, like, flowing open, and I was like, mm, this isn't good, so I, I really wasn't into the dress for that, but I did want to have something nice to wear that was not the same dress I wore to the other family event, and... Then, since we didn't go and I had this dress that I wasn't like the most fond of, I put it in a donation uh, bag. But I kept the shoes because I'm like, well, maybe I'll use the shoes. But I looked through my whole out my whole wardrobe and I have nothing else that goes with these shoes. And it was just that dress. So I was like, okay, I should get rid of these shoes too. So I put those finally in a bag for donating now. Um, and then some other fancy shoes that I had from a previous wedding, same family too, of all, pe of all, um, of all events, there are three different weddings for this one family in a five year period, and I was like, okay, and yeah, I had gotten rid of that dress too a while ago, had donated it, and so the shoes I had for that didn't match anything, so I was like, why do I have all these shoes that were for specific outfits, but I don't have those outfits anymore? So, got rid of the shoes now. So now I have like a bunch of shoe crates that don't have any shoes in them, which isn't like I'm looking to fill them right now, so I think that's good. For my sake, for my closet's sake. Um, I'm like, well, I kind of bought all the cool shoes I wanted uh, while there were some sales going on, and now I'm just fine, because there's not really anywhere I'm going. I have sandals for this year. I got rid of some old sandals that I wore out and were, like, starting to fray and get nasty. So not, I don't really have that many sandals, because... It doesn't stay hot very long where I live, so I wear one or two pair, and I wear them to the ground, and then they're too gross, so then I get rid of them. But, yep. Let me know if you do any kind of purges of your wardrobe uh, every few seasons or so. That's what I try to do. Um, but now, when it comes to knickknacks, nope. 
I hold on to that stuff forever. I'm just looking around, like, this room could use another once over, maybe twice over, maybe just burn it all and start over, but there are a lot of things that have sentimental value to me, so it's hard. Baby steps. I told my partner, I said, baby steps today. I did the bedroom. I looked through all my clothes, so there's that. And now, later, maybe next weekend, I'll look through uh, the kitchen. Because there's probably some stuff in there that I don't need, or it's expired and it's just stuck in the back of the pantry and I haven't noticed it in a while. I guess because, you know, I didn't have like a official, official spring cleaning. It seemed like winter was here so long and then magically it was summer, so... Eh. It's kind of weird like that. But... Hmm. So, other than checking in with my co-worker... A separate group of co-workers wants to check in with each other. Uh, we haven't set a date yet, but one of the folks wants to, or wants to organize it, had reached out to see if we all were interested. And I said, yeah. Well, actually, I didn't say anything yet. I was looking at the email when I was waiting to talk to the person I was training today. And I was like, oh, cool. I'll answer that um, on Monday when I'm back back at work. <laughs> so, it'll be nice to connect with them. Good, good people, so. See how everyone's doing. Additionally, I've been having some really weird dreams. Dreams of things that I feel are so real. Have you had that happen where you swear whatever you were experiencing in your, your dream was like really um, relatable, like real? Um, a case in point, I guess, uh, to give you some more context, I had a dream that I was watching a remake of an animated film that somebody had received the budget to remake everything was the same like all the music all of the voices everything even the movements however this person just illustrated it in their own style and had their own animation style but if you if you're familiar with the cartoon home movies or there was this other one that I think was like a court show or something and the cartoon people have like these really squiggly lines and they're always just kind of moving kind of fuzzily like fuzzily they're fuzzy because the lines aren't very straight when they're when they're walking it was like that but worse it was like somebody had a Microsoft paint like conniption and just drew everybody really really whacked out and this movie, I was like, this is horrible. This doesn't look anything like the original, but everything was the same. It was like a bootleg version of this original movie in my dream. And there was a whole audience, and there were even people dressed up. Grr? Can you say grr? <sighs> All right. Battery died. Battery had a two cells left. Battery did not give me the little red bar saying, Hey, I think it's time for me to take a nap now. So, I, I went, you know, when I did take it out, it was a little bit warm. So, I wonder if it was like overheating. That wasn't like going to burn my hand. It was just hot. Oh, so I was letting you guys know that I had this crazy dream. It was super real. Like, I. It was so real, there was even this song, 
totally random, but it was a song about chicken and hot sauce, and somebody in the crowd was singing it, and it was like the theme song of the show, like this movie, and there was even a guy in the crowd who was dressed up as one of like the horribly drawn remake characters, and I was like, oh, you're committed! And I was gonna shake their hand to be like, you know, good job on your costume, but they're just like, I'll just fist bump you. And I was like, duh, because we still have a pandemic going on. I shouldn't shake your hand, even though it's like in my, in my instinct to want to shake your hand and be like, good job. Uh, we're just going to fist bump because then we're not shaking hands. Like that was, you're still touching them, but like in my head that seemed to make sense. And it was weird. I woke up and I told my partner, I'm like, I, I just can't get this dream out of my head. Like it seemed like I was having this lived experience and I even, no kidding, when I woke up, I looked in Google <laughs> and I was like, chicken and hot sauce song? Like thinking I would see the animated characters of this movie. And there was even this villain kid. It was like, if you're from if you're a 90s kid or early 2000s kids, you might remember this show on TV called Recess. And there was this guy, what was his name, Finster? He was like the tattletale on, at Recess who was always telling, I forget his name, but I want to see it was Finster. Maybe it wasn't, but um, he was just like this sneaky guy. And there was a guy like that in the movie who was like a robot, but he was like infiltrating this in the school. It was like the tattletale guy and a principal or somebody was like, oh, you're very, you're very good. You're very scary. You're like, um, you look like, like Darth Vader. Like maybe if he didn't have his costume on, like you look, <laughs> now that I'm saying it, it doesn't make any sense. But in that moment, it was like, this is a dream about something that exists in real life because that's how real this dream feels to me. Like, this doesn't seem like something my brain would have just made up. Like, it sounds like it would exist. Like, how everything played out, it made so much sense. And <laughs> and, and it sometimes that happens where I wake up and I'm like, I have to Google this because am I, am I thinking of something that already happened? Is this deja vu? Or is my brain just like super weird? And I think it's just my brain is weird. But let me know if that's happened to you where you, you've had a dream where you swear your dream was based on something that was real, but it really wasn't. Like none of that had any reference to the reality. And, I, and then I told my partner, I'm like, maybe, maybe my, um, maybe my universe is like transversing with another universe and I am dreaming of a pause and pearls and another dimension who's having this lived experience and it's just kind of like, like a fuzzy, hazy kind of thought in my own head, like, that sounds really weird, right? But <laughs> conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh my gosh, I I need to get back into real into the real world. I think as much as I like being inside, I think my I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I mean that that could be the only reason why that I'm having these such such vivid dreams, and I even have like dreams of stories and. There's one that I actually think would make a really good book, but I don't want to say it because of somebody else who has like a lot. I just don't want to make anybody else rich off of my idea because it's, I don't know. And I, I thought maybe I was just, I don't, I don't even know. It's hard to explain when those things happen and it's, it's like, why is my brain doing this? <laughs> why is my brain setting me up to have like this weird fantasy world that, you know, some people dream about, well, I, I do too sometimes, of being in a class for a test 
and there's an assignment due and you've never taken that class or you missed the whole semester like why why does it always happen and then I wake up and I'm scared because I'm like did I really flunk out of this class because I missed all of it and I don't know what assignment we're doing right now but um, you know my dreams sometimes are just so every day that when they're super fantasy it seems like it would have already happened in my life and I'm actually just having a dream about what already happened that day when none of that happened and it's so weird very very weird but sometimes I get some cool inspiration out of it like random book ideas but then again, considering there's some overlap there, I probably had already heard about some of these things and just had like subliminally ignored it, but then my brain was like, oh, here's a cool idea, and it, it already exists because I just kind of suppressed that thought. I don't know. <laughs> It's like weird. It's like, okay, either I don't sleep enough or I sleep so much that I have really weird dreams. So, never ending weird dreams. <laughs> I used to write down what I would dream about. Like, I'd wake, well, one, I used to wake up super early with enough time to write down my dreams. Um, and that did prove itself to be helpful, at least even if it's just fragments of what I dreamt about, but I stopped doing that a while ago. Um, I almost feel like I should uh, just use a recorder and talk about it. Just have, uh, like on my phone when I wake up, like as I'm getting ready, just talk about what happened in my dream and then look back each day or maybe in a week or so, or a month even, and see what kinds of things I dreamt about. I mean, that could probably be a whole other YouTube channel, I think. Just, what did Paws and Pearls dream about, and does it have any significance in her life? Let me know in the comments if you have, one, really weird dreams, um, or dreams that feel real, and uh, two, do you write down or record somewhere what you dreamt about? Do you share your dreams with someone or just keep them to yourself? Sometimes I have dreams where I'm so scared I start shaking. like. I wake up and I'm just cold because of how scared I was and when I when I get scared um, or like really nervous I get cold I start to shiver um, so it was just like I was shaking 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 and you know I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't get warm enough because I'm just so frightened by what I dreamt about so if that happens to you, let me know, like, where you wake up and you're just scared now, like, you know it was a dream, but you're like, whoop, nope, 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 that was too close to home, don't like it. So, yeah, dreams are weird, brains are weird, humans are weird. <laughs> I always wonder what my cats dream about, because sometimes they... You know, when they're in REM, if you've ever seen your animal in REM, like their eyes rolling in the back of their head, their whiskers are twitchy, their paws are doing all kinds of stuff, and it's really fun to watch, but it's like, hmm, I wonder what what uh, Kabu and Koji dream about. Like, what is going on in their life that is reflecting in their brain? Like, wow! this kibble's delicious, mmm. Or they're like, oh no, somebody's on my favorite spot in the bed, what am I gonna do? Or hey, I keep digging and digging and 
Mm-hmm. I am not making my way to China. Why can't I just keep digging in my litter box right now? And I'm not going anywhere. Oh no. Like, what, <laughs> what do the kitties think about? Especially because they, well, they were feral before they were fostered or trapped and then brought to the shelter, respectively, depending on which cat I'm talking about. But, like, do they think about when they were a kitten and they were outside in the cold? Do they think about their mom? Do they think about their litter mates, you know, in their dreams? Do they remember that? I don't know. I would be curious to know. If there, if there is technology out there that will do that without projecting all the times they've seen me, like, walking around naked or something. <laughs> Nothing creepy like that, but, like, what innocent cats think about without, like, putting their owners on blast, I guess. I would like to know... So let me finish up this round. Oh, now that I have a new battery, I don't want to waste it, but it wouldn't be a waste, I mean, but it's going to take me a long time for my other battery to charge, so I don't want to, I want to quit while I'm ahead so I don't have any problems. So let's finish this round here. Mm-hmm. Oh, and when I was cleaning earlier, I found a giant catnip ball, and Kabu has been in heaven um, for a little bit now. Um, I left it on her cat bed, and then I heard her knock it down and roll it down the stairs, so that was pretty cute. So I was like, oh. So she found it, and she's interested. That's good. It was in my closet of all places. I don't even remember when it got back there or how it got up here. Because usually their toys are downstairs. So they have more room to run around. So I was really surprised that there was a giant catnip ball um, behind one of my shoe boxes in a closet. Which obviously means I should clean <laughs> clean behind my shoe boxes in the closet more often, but I was like, huh? Don't even recall that ending up back there. Alright, so we still have a ways to go. This is the top. Um, we have the part where you put your foot in, and then we have the foot part itself. So many, 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 many more stitches probably until about here where I can start to do the decreases to make the toe, which I will be using the fancy um, toe method that I found and hope for the best. <laughs> Knowing me, it might take sock number two to get the hang of it, but we'll see. We'll see. So thanks again for listening to me ramble about dreams and everything else i know it's it's always something with with this channel you never really know what you're gonna get <laughs> we start we started one topic and then we end on another um but i really like these kind of stream of consciousness videos where i could just chat and whatever comes to mind just comes to mind. Sometimes you hear some recaps from previous videos and previous things that have happened here um, on the channel or in my life, but for the most part, it's it's a crapshoot. You never know. You never know what you're gonna get. Um, but yes, thank you so much for sticking with me through the end. I hope you had fun Hope you're having fun working on your own project. Let me know what you're up to in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!